Well, hello everyone and welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. And this is, uh, I believe, the third installment uh, every Wednesday now at 8 p.m. Eastern time, which would be 6 p.m. Now, now be 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Um, West Coast time and also Arizona time. It's getting really confusing for, for someone like me from Nigeria. We only have one time zone. So it's a lot less complicated, but just so you know, that's the, the, we, we might actually switch it to 9 p.m. Eastern, so that will make it 6 p.m. California and Arizona time. So, so just, just stay in tune. Uh, after each webinar, we will be sending you uh, the, the links to the report to, to watch the whole recording. So, um, so make be sure you register and you can include other people's emails if you feel they you want to send, send it to them as well. All right, today we're going to be talking about what I refer to as the four horsemen. And these are basically the most fundamental, in my opinion, and I'll tell you how we, got, we, we came across these four. But in my opinion, these are the most fundamental, the most basic processes in the body. And these are the ones that affect how well you, how well you age, um, how healthy you are on a daily basis, how well you, well you recover from illness or from sickness and disease, or how susceptible you are to sickness and disease. And a good example, obviously, is COVID-19. Everybody is everywhere now, and it's pretty much endemic. Um, I'm going to explain how these four processes uh, make you more prone to having a severe form of COVID or make you less prone to having a severe form of COVID. And bottom line is that, I mean, with all the noise going on about, the bottom line is that, is, is that you, you don't want to die from COVID. That's really the bottom line here. And obviously you don't want to have the long-term consequences from COVID. So we want to show you, we're going to show you how to strengthen your body and how to keep you strong and fit to, to whenever you're ready to go. So let me get the slides up. And of course you can type in your questions at any time. And towards the end, Jan and I will go over these questions and then uh, hopefully we'll get, we'll get them answered. Uh, I, let me pull the slides. I think hopefully everybody can see me, uh, see the slides, excuse me. So this is a, this is a work uh, by the Brain and Body Foundation that's it's registered both in the US and in Nigeria. And I'll tell you a little bit about what we do as we go along. Housekeeping, this is not to replace your doctor or your healthcare professional's expert advice. If you're on drugs, please stay on the drugs. Do not modify your drugs without speaking to your healthcare professional. Uh, this is about I'm helping you strengthen your body, helping you strengthen your brain, the things that you need to do. Uh, like I said, we'll talk about our work with the Brain and Body Foundation. If you do want to have uh, more detailed consultations, Afterwards, we do provide that all the funding and all the um, expenses go to the foundation for our research, our charity work in Nigeria, especially with sickle cell disease at, at this point. So yes, we can schedule separate one-on-ones, uh, either in person or over the phone, and uh, there's a fee for that. And of course, we, when we talk about supplements and nutraceuticals, uh, most of the ones that we talk about are things that I have personally sought after and use them extensively both in children and in adults. And we've seen tremendous results from them. And of course, there is no one company that sorts out that, that caters to everything, but obviously so and we will not be talking about any specific company because we want as many people to come over uh, to join the, the call and join the webinar so we can give you, uh, just give you as, 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 a, as wide a, a range and basically address the specific problems that you have. So, so um, we, we, like I said, it's, it's gonna be hopefully as generic as possible. If you want details, we definitely will point you in the right direction. We shall be as fair and as detailed as possible. The bottom line is we want you to be able to know how to take control of your health and make the right decisions about your health and that of your family. I of course provide you with the tools that you need uh, to do just that, to so take control of your health. Let's start with this quote. I love this quote. I said, I've been using this quote for about five years now because it's so apt. Let's go. A man does not come to the arms house or the jail by the tyranny of fate or circumstance, but by the pathway, emphasis on pathway, of groveling thoughts and base desires. 
nor does a pure-minded man fall suddenly into crime by the stress of any mere external force. The criminal thought had long been secretly fostered in his heart or her heart, and the hour of opportunity revealed its gathered power. The criminal thought had long been secretly fostered in, in, in their hearts, and the hour of opportunity revealed its gathered power by James Allen. Now, well, we're not here to talk about morality or religion or criminality, whatever. I love this quote because it basically, it basically exemplifies and it illustrates what happens when you have a heart attack, not you, but someone has a heart attack or a stroke or cancer or, or falls or succumbs to any major life-threatening disease or gets or, or dies. It's almost never a sudden thing. Yes, it eventually becomes a sudden thing, but there's a buildup over time. Um, there could a nutritional deficiency. It could have been blood, inadequate circulation of blood. It could be um, stress, excessive stress. The person is, is not dealing with stress properly. The person may not be having an adequate sleep. It may be, it may be uh, lax when it comes to sleep. Uh, they, they may not be exercising, they may not be moving around. Of, yes, obviously the genes do play a role, but for the most part, and I would say over 10, over 90% of cases is because of a slow progression. Just as the uh, person who ends up in the criminal, in, 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 the, in the jail or in prison, many times it's a series of wrong steps, series of wrong decisions that eventually got them to commit the major offense which landed them in jail. In, many, in most cases, it's a series of wrong choices, maybe consciously or unconsciously, inadvertently sometimes, that ended up causing these problems. And I know I'm talking to a lot of people who are obviously older, so you would probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this, a lot of this too is for the younger generation, if they would listen, because these things basically starts in your earlier years, but because we're so young, we're, we're tough, we're bulletproof. We tend not to take them seriously and we just kind of like move along with it. But those things are there underneath the surface, surface and they're fostering, and they're festering uh, away. So the four horsemen, and basically uh, I, this came out of our work with sickle cell disease, which I talk about a lot, and which is why I'm in the United States. Uh, when we started seeing kids coming to our center with sickle cell disease, it's a blood disorder that causes the blood cell to get thickened and hard and therefore block the blood vessels causing a lot of pain and eventually death in most cases. Um, they started coming to us and we started saying, okay, what can be done? Yes, it's a genetic disease. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's no one has found a good cure for it, but is there something we can do? And we found out that there was something we could do. And there were like three or four areas that if we address them using specific nutritional supplements, we could make a huge difference. And this hadn't been talked about much. And as I look into the literature up, up to now, there really isn't much that actually talks about how to address sickle cell disease. So based on what I could find out from the literature, from the research, we said, okay, well, let's uh, address each of these and let's see what happens. So what are, what are these uh, four horsemen? Okay, uh, these are just pictures of what we're doing in Nigeria and how we went to the Ministry of Health to explain, to, to, to tell them that we could help with, this, with the kids with sickle cell disease. The four areas, the four processes are one, immune function. The other, you probably heard of antioxidants. That's number two, uh, oxidative stress, free radical damage. I'm gonna explain that in a minute. Chronic inflammation is number three, and then nitric oxide production or nitric oxide levels. These are the four things that if you can get a hold of them, if you can get a hold on them, uh, even if it's just two, if, if you're looking to just maintain your health, you need that to know and get a hold of, get a handle of, or handle on, I believe it's handle on, <laughs> handle on at least two of them. If you're trying to recover from a disease like cancer, you better know how all four, and you better be applying them effectively on a daily basis. These four are what govern most diseases. And when I talk about most diseases, we're not talking about those as a result of injury or infection, uh, like, uh, um, coronavirus would probably be an infection. But, but the, I'm talking more about chronic disease. And of course, chronic disease can make you, like I said, 
more susceptible, certain things can make you more susceptible to coronavirus and other infections. But chronic disease, these are the things that basically kill people in the modern world. So let's start with immune function. Of course, your immune system is your Voltron. It's about 25, I believe it's about 25% of the entire cells in the human body, extremely elaborate system, it's extremely effective system. There are immune cells in every single organ in your body and they are there to protect. They are there to, to, to surveil. They are there to, to detect problems and to address those problems as they, as they occur. You, you cannot survive. You cannot survive without a well-functioning immune system. Just forget it. So uh, there's another picture of, of the immune system, the, the major areas. I'll talk about the immune system and the gut in a few minutes. The next one is, the, is free radical damage. And I have this picture here. You gotta remember folks that with increased modernization, increased technology, whether in farming or cell phones, whatever, there has been increased stress and increased assaults on the human brain and body. We're facing a lot more toxins than we've ever faced in the history of humanity. They're looking at kids, um, babies being born now, and they're seeing in the cord, the cord blood over 200 different toxins, which were not there before. There's a lot going on. And that's why probably one of the reasons why we have such an increase in autism and other brain disorders like uh, dementia. A lot of it has to do with toxins. But these toxins are not just things that are coming in from the external environment. And we have here radiation, uh, bugs, heavy metals, chemicals. These toxins are also being created inside your body just from basic living, basically existing on this planet. You are constantly, constantly, day in, day out producing toxins. Most of these are known as free radicals. It's kind of like if you're in a car, I mean, you know, if you think about a car, for instance, you put in gas, the car burns the gas, it produces energy so that the car can move. Well, in the process of producing that energy, it also produces a lot of waste products. And these, product, these waste products have to be removed from the car through the exhaust pipe. And they have to, and obviously they go into the environment where it causes more problems. But that's the point. The point is that for a human being or a machine to function, there, there is a drawback, which is that you are producing chemicals. So your body produces toxins and your body should be able to effectively get rid of those toxins or at least neutralize the toxins. And that's where things like antioxidants come in. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that, that in, in a few minutes. Um, the younger you are, the better you are to, able, you are able to remove those toxins and detoxify those toxins. Again, if you're older, you have less ability. Don't you love getting old? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing all kinds of crazy things I'm seeing in my body too. I'm like, why? Why do you have to face these things going, getting older? Uh, anyway, um, so cancer is a good example of the constant, constant buildup in um, toxins. Obviously, most cancers take place at an older age, mostly from the, from the age of 40 and above when things have kind of become yeah, on the downward spiral, so to speak. The death march has become more obvious. <laughs> I know this sounds like a really morbid, morbid lecture. But if you look at this picture down below here, you can see that diet plays about 30, 35% of the problems that are causing um, cancer, tobacco, smoke, that's the environment. It's not just um, you smoking, but also just um, secondhand smoke, obesity, others, alcohol. And, and I don't think... This diagram pays enough, gives enough uh, uh, justice, does enough justice to really the other things that we're, we're facing. I mean, even now the foods we eat, if they're not organic, we're taking in a lot of toxins. It's not saying anything about that here. I guess that's what's included in the others. Bottom line is that our bodies are constantly, constantly being assailed by um, chemicals, which may not be toxins. The body may not really see them as toxins, they may just the chemicals that come on like, like they're like Trojan horses, get into your body and shift things. A good example are and, uh, hormones, hormones in our meats, hormones in the food and other things that somehow get in there or antibiotics. They're not really toxins in that true sense, but they shift things and make your body function in a way that it shouldn't function. And over time that can result in problems like cancer. Um, so the third one is inflammation. Uh, this 
this Time magazine cover was in 2004. And it says that the surprising link between inflammation and heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases, and what you can do to fight, to fight it. So they are coming, the medical community is coming, coming to the realization that inflammation is, a, is one of those foundations. It's at the bedrock of several, several diseases. Some say as many as, as much as 98% of all diseases have inflammation there as a factor there somehow. Certainly it's, it's involved in cancer, certainly it's involved in heart attacks, uh, certainly it's involved in Alzheimer's disease. And I can tell you for a fact, from, with sickle cell disease and autism and other brain disorders in children, we found out that simply by using anti-inflammatories, we can have, we can see some really good, good, good results. So when most people think about inflammation, they think primarily in terms of the raging, screaming inflammation, the one that causes pain, maybe pain in your joints, in your elbows, in your gut somewhere. Um, but what scientists are talking about now is that there's a lot more the quote unquote silent inflammation or the chronic inflammation is a lot more insidious. And that's really where the problem lies. If you can feel the inflammation, that's a good thing because you can do something about it. For many of us, there's inflammation going on in our bodies that you can't feel. And it's just it's building upon itself, it's building upon itself. Remember what that quote, that James Allen quote, it says through the pathway. So basically that pathway towards a heart attack is already being laid. It's already, um, most people are making progress towards that, unfortunately. So what we need to do, it's not, I mean, you, you can do the tests that you need to do if you have access to them. Many times in Africa, we don't have access to many of the tests that can tell us accurately what's going on when it comes to inflammation. However, there are other things. I mean, you just need to do the right thing. So basically, it's really about doing what it takes uh, to, uh, to counter the effects of inflammation. And finally, finally, nitric oxide levels. We talked about this in our last class with regards to the heart of the matter, and now we send out the links. If you want, to, if you want a link to watch the video again, let us know. Basically, nitric oxide, uh, what it does is that it helps to dilate. You can see this is, a, this, is, this is an artery. With nitric oxide, without nitric oxide, it stays tight and constricted and narrow. That's this um, yellow part, that's the part through which blood passes. With nitric oxide, you get dilatation and relaxation, so the blood is able to flow through. If, if you are not able to, if you are not producing enough nitric oxide, and that nitric oxide is produced in the lining of the blood vessels, if you're not producing enough nitric oxide, the blood vessels are going to be tight, and therefore it, it predisposes you to, guess what, hypertension. But nitric oxide is not just for the blood vessels, it's also for the brain, it's also for, for functioning of the brain. And um, I, I, I was remarkably uh, astonished when we started treating in Nigeria, treating people with strokes, we started giving them things that could boost their nitric oxide and the results were fascinating. In fact, uh, real, let me see, what's the next? Yeah, so this is another picture here, so of nitric oxide. Um, nitric oxide and endothelial health. I was going to tell you about the story about uh, one of the kids with sickle cell disease. Uh, I, I think I mentioned it last time. Uh, she was she, she's a twin, a twin uh, at the age of five. She lost her sister to um, a crisis, uh, an attack, and then she now shortly afterwards she had a stroke and completely paralyzed, could not do much at all. And uh, we started helping out. We give. I mean, sometimes we're given in each month. We're given like stuff worth over eight hundred dollars free of charge to her and um, omega-3s, all, all kinds of things, uh, supplements that address these four areas, except for nitric oxide. And each time the parents would come back and say, yeah, some improvements, uh, we're, we're, we're grateful, improvement here and there. And it just wasn't satisfactory. Uh, but when we added nitric, a supplement that could help boost uh, nitric oxide production in the brain and in the blood vessels, the story that the parents came back with was that this child for the first time is suddenly coming alive. It's almost like a light, light bulb switched on in her, in her brain. She's happier, she's more lively, she's functioning better. I mean, it was remarkable. It was absolutely remarkable. Obviously that doesn't, that, when I'm gonna say that's typical in most cases, but in that case, it's really stuck in my mind. Okay, nitric oxide tends to go down with age. 
so when you're 10 years, you have a lot of nitric oxide. As you grow older, yeah, another thing with age, it tends to reduce. So you need to know, obviously, what you need to do to boost nitric oxide formation uh, production. Um, here's another diagram. Uh, so when you're younger, in your 20s, right there, you have over 100% nitric oxide. Uh, as you grow older, that nitric oxide levels reduce until when you get all really old, maybe 60 plus. Whew, I gotta be careful on this call before I get in trouble. Anyway, <laughs> the lining, this lining here is what produces nitric oxide. So I'm gonna, so we're gonna kind of like bring everything together, uh, show how all these four horsemen relate. But bottom line is that you need to have healthy blood vessels to be able to produce nitric oxide. Once these blood vessels begin to get thickened, when the, once the, the deposition on the inner lining of the blood vessels, the body, the, the, the blood vessels do not and cannot produce nitric oxide like they should. So uh, it's very important uh, to know what it does, uh, what it requires, what it is required to help the blood vessels be healthy, not just help them produce nitric oxide, but help them to, to be healthy. All right, so we've kind of gone through the four of them. So again, the, the immune system, immune function, number two is free radical damage or the levels of, or the balance of uh, oxidant, free radicals and antioxidants or the oxidation, antioxidation, uh, balance number three is inflammation, the levels of inflammation in the body, and number four is how effectively your body is producing nitric oxide. Again, these are the basics, these are the fundamental things. Like I said, we discovered them from I've been working with sickle cell disease, and I realized that wait a minute, we use these same supplements and these same principles to apply to. Uh, our patients with heart disease, to our patients with cancers, to our patients with brain issues, basically the same things. So it was then I was like, wait a minute, this should be able to apply across the board, especially, especially where ch chronic disease is concerned. And to my knowledge, once we've started looking in all the different areas of health, we found these four things always at the forefront. They are, they are the fundamental things. And real quick, um, I'm all for... Uh, taking multivitamins. I don't, quite frankly, I don't even take multivitamins. I, I, I just take supplements that address all these four areas. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean that you don't, you, you're not supposed to. I'm just saying that it's more important to address processes in the body. And by the way, multivitamins are supposed to do that. But the problem I have with many times with multivitamins is that they have, they just have these, the nutrients or the vitamins and minerals and like token amounts, right? It's just like a little here, a little here, just to show that they've covered all the bases that, okay, we know you have potassium in there or magnesium, but in terms of the levels that are required to really shift things in the body, not much. So one vitamins sort of remind me of Hollywood movies these, these days. You gotta, <laughs> you, want, you, want, you, you they want to cater to all the different parties, uh, you know, the woke crowd here and the religious right here, or, well, they don't do anything just right, but the woke crowd, the politics, China, everybody. So they want to make sure that no one is offended. And that's the picture that comes to mind when I think about multivitamins. It's like, uh, they're just trying to cover all the bases. That doesn't mean that there aren't some really, really, really good multivitamins, but you got to look hard and uh, uh, look, search well to get the right kinds. So again, I like, to, I like to take nutrient combinations that address each of these four bases because I can tell you it's gonna, that's going to take you a lot further and it'd be more effective. And yes, you can still take a multivitamin, but uh, I think I, you, you get the picture. I have this picture in front of you, in front of me again, just to show that the, the leading causes of death will all have, all, have been for a long time and um, at least as far as the turn of the century is, is concerned, um, the 20th, yeah, let's say 21st century, we know for a fact that heart disease, uh, and that includes strokes, circulatory disorders, heart attacks and strokes, they are the top killers. And it's worse in the developing, developing world or the third world where countries like Nigeria, where I'm from, uh, it's a lot worse because, yeah, we, one, there's a lot of ignorance, and uh, two, so we simply don't have access to all this 
top-notch healthcare systems where you can monitor and you have the experts tell you what you need to do and what you need to address. So therefore it's important, especially if you are, you are watching this from a third world country, and especially with COVID-19, it's like it's kind of like limited the amount of access you have to your healthcare pro professionals. Uh, it's super important, super important that you understand the basics, the, 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 the basic principles that you can apply without, and I want, I want to be careful when I'm saying this, uh, you do need to go to your doctor, but, but there are things that your doctor cannot do for you, you have to do for yourself. And that includes taking the right kind of nutrients that will specifically address these four areas, the immune system, uh, free radical damage, inflammation, and nitric oxide production. You cannot get past those. Now, if you can think of any other basic process that affects everything, please let me know. And uh, we will definitely uh, include that if we're convinced uh, in talks going forward. So what specifically are you supposed to do? I just want to say a few things about the laws of life, and I'm probably going to do a full talk on that. Well, these are seven areas that affect the human being. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't, I feel this needs to be taught in classes in schools, getting started from kindergarten, because so few of us understand uh, or appreciate uh, some of these basic things. For instance, the words you speak, the, the damaging of effects of certain words, maybe by a parent or by a teacher or any other authority figure that says, uh, that says something that kind of shifts that person's view of the world, that, if, that it affects that person's health, affects that person's ability to aspire and to be ambitious and to reach for the top simply because the parents said something in a careless way. And you all know what I'm talking about. But the words you read can also, your know, words you hear and you speak can also be in the, used in a positive way. Uh, we, we know people who say that they're going to die before the age of 40. And that's what happened. Martin Luther King is one perfect example. He kept on saying that he was going to die before the age of 40. And he, he died before the age of 40. Theodore Roosevelt, on the other hand, said, said he kept on telling his doctor because he was sickly and he had, he had asthma. Uh, he said, I'm going to live past 60 even though the doctors were saying he wasn't going to live long because of his sickly condition. And, he, and again, he got what he said. I think I was Presley to those, those similar, similar talk about, about him saying some certain things. Anyway, your beliefs are hugely important. And I know the people I'm talking to, at least I, I know most of you on this call understand these things. Uh, you, many times we learn these things through experience. Uh, but again, this is something that the younger ones too should be able to appreciate. Uh, the thoughts and emotions you experience, if you're stressed all the time, guess what, it's gonna affect your immune system, it's gonna affect your ability to counteract free radicals, it's gonna cause increase in inflammation, it's gonna cause reduction in nitric oxides. Trust me when I say that, you can check it out yourself. Uh, number five, I mentioned sleep, exercise, uh, sex too can be a good thing, you've done right. Your relationships, the kind of work you do, some of the happiest and the healthiest people as you know, are those who really, really enjoy their work. Once you really enjoy your work and your work is, is providing you with a good source of income, those four bases will be significantly improved. And I'm not saying that's all you need, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, being happy can really turn those things in the right direction. On the other hand, if you're smoking, uh, you know, exercising, you drink a lot of alcohol, you, you are careless about your diets, or you work in an environment in which you're exposed to a lot of toxins, or you're on medications a lot for whatever reason. Can you see what that last one is down there? Uh, probably some, I can't really see it. But anyway, um, unless you have, you've been endowed with genes for, for a planet called Krypton, and yet, unless you're, you're like Superman, it's, it's, it's highly unlikely you're going to live a healthy life to your 70s and 80s. Highly unlikely. Anyway, we don't have time to look into all those things. Let's talk about the fourth law, which has to do with the food uh, or what you put in your mouth. I love this quote. It's not only what you eat that's killing you. It's what you don't eat. It's what you neglect to eat. And I hope you've seen that, and I'm going to point to it some more, 
Uh, if you're not deliberately taking something to boost your nitric oxide forward, like nitric oxide production, for instance, uh, there's a good chance that your blood vessels are compromised, especially if you're growing, getting older and older, because that is just the way of life. I've showed you the graph. The graph shows that when you're uh, at 10 or 20 years of age, you've got a lot of nitric oxide, and as you grow older, it begins to go down. Production begins to go down. Same thing with uh, inflammation, same thing with um, um, antioxidants. Your body naturally produces antioxidants, as you grow older, that's production wanes. Your body naturally has a strong immune system, but as you grow older, with all the stresses of life, uh, that immune system gets weaker and weaker and weaker. There's another great quote. Because we're talking about how to shift these things, how to deliberately and intelligently address these four areas, we have to see nutrition as a tool, as a resource. The human body heals itself, and proper nutrition provides it with the resources it requires to accomplish that task. Go back to that first quote. The pathway is called a pathway of groveling thoughts. We are all having our bodies, our cells, our tissues being damaged on a regular basis. So our bodies are constantly, constantly scrambling, trying to repair that damage, trying to heal that damage. The bodies need the right nutrients to boost immune function, to counter inflammation, to reduce free radical damage, to protect itself, to, yes, improve nitric oxide production. It needs the right nutrients, the building blocks, the resources to do those things. And if you're not deliberately, intelligently providing your body with those resources, it's going to be hard. Uh, it, it, you're going to be constantly behind the, the, eight, the eight ball, as Americans like to call it. So what immune, what things, uh, what, what supplements help to strengthen the immune system? Because that's really what we're talking about. Things that strengthen us in all those four areas. I love this quote. I'm not going to read it out. I, I'm, just, I'm going to read it out. Make men large and strong, and tyranny will bankrupt itself in making shackles for them. Make men large and strong. Make the immune system large and strong and uh, bugs, viruses, bacteria, fungi, all these bad guys who will bankrupt themselves. They'll just give up because the immune system is, is strong and able to keep things in check. But the key, the key uh, cell in the immune system, I love to call, uh, um, and I've, I'm studying this cell more and more, but the most important cell in my opinion and, 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 and that of a lot of other scientists it's called the macrophage, fudge, which is the big eater. It's like the quarterback. The macrophage is like the quarterback. It's, it's, it's the one who sees a problem, sends signals to, to, to gather the right immune cells to attack that problem, whether it's a virus or a cancer or whatever it is. The macrophage that deals with it, he coordinates all these thing, things. It also deals with the debris. So after the war, so to speak, the macrophage comes and cleans up and mops up and coordinates the repair process. So the macrophage is really important. Now, so the, the intelligent question is what strengthens the macrophage? Yes, we need to know what strengthens the immune system, but specifically the macrophage or macrophage, what strengthens the macrophage so I can do the work, some of which I've just described. And that's the macrophage right here. This, I believe is purplish on your screen. And the macrophage needs a substance called mannose. You can see this is a, like a receptor, it's like a helipad. The nutrient called mannose locks onto this receptor. And that is what turns the key for the mannose to do its work of detecting, identifying, attacking other things, whether it's a cancer cell uh, or uh, the, these are all this, this, these things. Okay, there's, a, this, there's this right here, it's a pie. It's a pie. Pathogen is like a bug. Anyway, bottom line, I hope can really this. Uh, each of these will be a topic on its own, but I'm just kind of like covering, just doing an, an overview right now. Bottom line is the macrophage needs uh, a, a substance called ace manin, which is like a form of mannose, and it's a kind of sugar that activates and strengthens the immune cells, especially the macrophage, to do its work of ident identification. And so you need ace manin. That comes in a supplement. 
I, I don't want to just leave the part of the immune system without saying this. That if you're going to keep your immune system healthy, you you cannot afford to neglect your gut, your digestive system, because a large, the greater part of the immune system lives in your gut. So uh, the gut is not, the gut is not just to digest food; it's also to it house it, to house the immune system. So the healthier the gut is, the healthier your, your intestines, especially your colon, are, the healthier your immune system will be. That's why cleanses. You uh, use properly colon cleanses have done wonders for certain people because it's all that gunk and debris and junk that has that has been sitting there and festering for years and years and years it's finally gotten out of the way and therefore ridding the body of toxins. Uh, person feels lighter, feels unburdened, and it's, uh, suddenly the immune system wakes up because all that gunk had been interfering with its ability to function like it should. So. Super important to have a. I, I remember uh, one of the webinars I was doing many years ago. That was uh, that was um, one of the viewers, and I learned a lot from viewers. That's why I always like uh, people to ask questions. She said uh, a relative of hers had Alzheimer's disease, and they took them. They took him for a colon cleanse. And this guy was out of it. He just was not responding. I uh, was totally out of it. But after the colon cleanse. <laughs> The person said that for two weeks afterwards, when they had cleaned up the gut, for two weeks afterwards, that person was completely lucid, completely normal, remembered everything, talked normally. After that two weeks, he, he, he regressed again. What do you make of it? Well, I can't tell you everything. I can't tell you. I, I don't know everything that was involved in this, but... That just goes to say that a healthy gut, um, a clean gut, can go a long way towards helping out. All right, so let's talk about the second horseman, which is the free radical damage. Like I said, your body is always producing toxins. You're breathing in toxins. You're drinking toxins. You are eating toxins. Toxins on your skin. <laughs> uh, ladies, uh, nothing against the makeup, but... You got to, um, and, and hair cream and different hairsprays, all those add to the toxic burden. Again, I'm, <laughs> please don't see it as a judgment. I'm just presenting the facts as they are. These cause toxins to accumulate in the body because your, your skin absorbs all these toxins. So it's very important uh, to be able to, to know what to do with it. I've talked about zeolites before. These are like things like from volcanic ash. Uh, they found out that it helps the uh, very natural they help to just absorb and clean up toxins from your, from your body. I use them with kids with autism a, a, a lot. Um, but that's the first thing we do. We want to clean up, clean up their gut and as much as possible, take out the toxins from their bloodstream and their, their brains. So zeolites, we use that. Another thing that probably you should be aware of is there's what is known as glutathione. The, there are several different kinds of antioxidants. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. Vitamin, C, vitamin E is an antioxidant. But the most important antioxidant that people and scientists will talk to will talk about is called glutathione. It's made inside the cell and it help, is, the, is known as an intracellular cellular antioxidant. And it helps to keep the cell clean from toxins. Your body produces glutathione if given the right circumstances. And there are certain, sub, certain sub supplements that can help to significantly improve your glutathione, your glutathione production. In fact, uh, many scientists believe that the key part of aging is that constant uh, uh, buildup of, of these free radicals in your body without them being removed from the body. So one of the things, one of the keys they say to, as an anti-aging product is to have a supplement or to take supplements or foods that significantly improve your know, antioxidant production and therefore your glutathione production. Uh, inflammation, you gotta take anti-inflammatory. So, I like, let me try and explain this a little bit. So if you think about inflammation, you think about free radical damage, and you think about the immune system. Interestingly enough, the immune system produces free radicals. The immune system also, the cells of the immune system also produce uh, inflammatory substances. So, uh, in, in, so the immune system, again, is so key in many of these things. Um, so you can think about uh, um, uh, an army, an invading army. Think about, well, Russia is in the news a lot. So, the, so Russia is the army that's invading um, 
what's it called? Ukraine. <laughs> Oof, I need some. I need something for my brain. All right. So Russia is invading Ukraine. So they're the army. They're shooting ammunition. They're shooting shells, the tanks, and all that. So the the human beings are the army and the weaponry as well. What is being shoot shoot it? So the human beings are the immune system. The weaponry, the tanks, the rounds are the free radicals. Think of it that way. Inflammation is your body's response to attack or to healing or to damage. So it's not the Russian soldiers that are the inflammatory thing. The inflammation is actually caused by the Ukrainians themselves or caused by the defending party, the defending army. They're the ones, um, sometimes they end up having to, to, to destroy their own homes and destroy their bridges if you think about guerrilla warfare, I grew up in the military, so I, I, I tend to think in terms of, 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 of military stuff. So I'll try to explain it as much as possible. Um, forgive me for using this. That's what comes to mind right now. But Ukrainian, but the, the defending um, armies, they're the ones who, uh, they might have to do guerrilla warfare, they might destroy the, destroy the homes and destroy the buildings so that the military, the invading forces don't have a, don't have a ground. They're not able to invade like they should. They may destroy the bridges. Inflammation also involves actually uh, repairing the damage. So inflammation, the same Ukrainians are the, the ones who destroy themselves and they, they fire back. They also um, also bring in the repair squads to fix things. Hopefully when this war, war, this war is over, the Ukrainians will fix and repair, their, repair the damage with the help of the Western world, okay? I hope that kind of produces a picture because it's, it's, uh, the body does damage to itself when there's an when there's an invasion. It does damage to itself. So what you need to do is you need a, an, an anti-inflammatory that helps to uh, reduce the damage to itself and keep the damage on the invasion uh, invading forces. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, makes sense to me. So I don't know if it does make sense to you, I guess. And anyway, we'll talk about it afterwards and continue your questions. So you need, um, so what we found out from, 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 um, from our work with the foundation, especially with kids with severe brain damage from things like uh, um, birth asphyxia or jaundice, who had severe cerebral palsy, was that once we started giving them high potency, high dose omega-3 fatty acids, uh, we had significant improvements. Um, we have story upon story of how kids who um, suddenly began to walk when they couldn't even hold their necks up. Uh, it wasn't suddenly empty that back. It took time, but over time they, they began to recover their health uh, because they were given potent anti-inflammatories. And omega-3s are probably the best known anti-inflammatories you need. If you're dealing with a brain problem, you've got to use omega-3 somewhere along what you're doing. You've got to use it. Same thing with, the, with, the, with heart health things um, because omega-3s are important to quell the inflammation in the lining of the, of the blood vessels. I think I have some pictures. I'll show, them, show, you, show you some of them later on. Nitric oxide production. Okay. You need a supplement that will help to boost your nitric oxide, especially if you're concerned. I mean, even if you're not concerned, I mean, when you turn 40, your blood vessels, again, unless you have some really good genes, your blood vessels are going to be compromised. So what these three people, these are three scientists, Nobel Prize winners, they found out the importance of nitric oxide in the cardiovascular system, and they were given a Nobel Prize for that, uh, for their discovery. And Dr. Louis Louis Ignaro, he is probably the biggest proponent of this uh, of nitric oxide. And he, one of the things he says is that you've got to take things that help to produce nitric oxide. And he focuses a lot on this number three here, L-arginine, which is an amino acid, an amino acid that the body takes in, the blood vessels specifically take in, and they break it down. Once the blood vessels, the lining of the, the cells and the lining of the blood vessels take in. Uh, L-arginine, they break it down and they produce nitric, and they produce nitric oxide. He says you need at least five grams of L-arginine alone. But here's the problem: you can't uh, L-arginine alone. It's not going to work. You need what is known as a supporting cast, 
you need a supporting cast, which means you need things like vitamin D, uh, magnesium, omega threes, another kind of uh, of amino acid called citrulline, right here, number three, L citrulline. These this supporting cast make it so that the L arginine uh, stays longer in the blood and helps to produce more nitric oxide. So the, now the nitric oxide it makes it stays longer because if it doesn't have that supporting cast, if all you take is, a, is an L-arginine supplement, if all you take is an L-arginine supplement, well, guess what? It's just gonna be work for about four minutes, five minutes top, and, to, and it, gets, it will get lost. It dissolves and gets lost in the system. The supporting cast maintains it for about six hours in the body. So you need at least five grams. If you are dealing with a major heart condition <clears throat> or uh, you need at least four grams. You need at least ten grams. Um, some of some of patients are, of ours, we give them we give them um, five times twenty grams of, of it a day. They all in some cases no. That's twenty. Yeah, that's four. Six would be thirty grams. Yeah, thirty grams a day. That's when things begin to work for them after only thirty grams. So it's it's, it's it depends on the it depends on the on the on the condition on the individual and. Um, yeah, depending on the condition. That's why it's so important to have someone to hold your hand to guide you through the process because it's not just enough just to go to any store and just buy anything that's there and say, hey, listen, I took five grams a day. How come I'm not, I'm not getting better? It doesn't always work that way. You need someone who has gone through, kind of walked that path before or has used that those supplements before and to be able to adapt to so you can use a certain dose for the first month the second month, you might have to take a higher dose based on the results from the first month. Third month, you might have to pull back a little bit, but you definitely need, um, if you're just getting into this, you probably need some hand holding. Okay, so let's try and bring this all together. Uh, let's see, it, uh, yeah, let's try and bring this all together. So I'm going to use this blood vessel. So this is a blood vessel as an example. So the blood flows from the left to the right. Under normal circumstances, it should be clean. Uh, the in, inner lining of the blood vessel should be clean. So blood should be able to flow through without any kind of hindrance or encumbrance, any obstruction. This right here is, all this right here is an obstruction. Once the blood vessels are healthy, they will produce enough nitric oxide. Remember we said it's usually in your 20s that your body's producing enough nitric oxide. Let's see, hang on, sorry. Okay, I was just checked it. I want to check to see if uh, Janet sent me a text because I can't hear anything. Now, with time, there's damage to the lining of the blood vessels. And that happens everywhere. I mean, if you have a pipe that, that takes water to, to the to buildings over time, and you see debris, debris begin to accumulate on the inside of it. It happens everywhere. So the same thing happens. You can see find debris accumulating. But because the human body is alive, uh, the body tends to react to this debris. So if there's uh, so uh, once the body once the body sense, senses an insult or an injury, it begins to um, cause inflammation. The immune system tries to come in and fix that problem. Sometimes it doesn't fix that problem like it should. So things begin to accumulate. So I've mentioned the immune system. I've mentioned inflammation. With inflammation, cause comes free radi radical damage. So th those are the first three already happening. Once those three are happening and it happens over time, remember the pathway. The pathway, the pathway, it's a period of, it's, it happens over a period of time. Once there's significant inflammation, you can see that the body, these cells will not be producing enough nitric oxide anymore because the, the cells that are supposed to be producing the nitric oxide are being you know, encumbered with all this yellow stuff and green stuff. As you can see it, some of it is plaque, some of it's calcium build, build up. We talk about the, the vulnerable plaque. And once your body isn't producing enough nitric oxide, the walls of the blood vessels begin to get stiff and hardened, called atherosclerosis. So you can see the pathway, the immune, immune system dysfunc dysfunction, um, free radical production, inflammation, lowered nitric oxide production. And so eventually this, the blood vessels just get thicker and thicker and eventually you can, get, you can have a major problem, anything from a heart attack to a stroke to atrial fibrillation. The key of course is to address those four things, but 
again, if you can help, especially where the cardiovascular system is concerned, if you can give that boosting nitric oxide production, you, that, that can short circuit, that can um, jumpstart the process of recovery. Okay. Can't finish this talk without talking about COVID-19, the big C. Uh, so looking at the top factors for COVID, for the severity, who's gonna die, who's gonna have long-term deficits from COVID-19? Uh, the usual suspects, age, obesity, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, pulmonary disease. Interesting thing, um, males versus females, they find that males have more of the COVID-19 than females do. And guess what? We know that females in general have stronger immune systems. Shock, shock. It has something to do with the X, the X chromosome. So the, um, females are XS, X, X, men are XY. They say the, the immune system uh, is more on the X than on the Y. So if you have twice two of the X, you have a, a double dose of a strong immune system. That's what is being said, uh, and you can confirm that. So that's really, uh, I think I've heard that a couple of times. Uh, race, um, black people tend to have lower levels of nitric oxide. Because, uh, for one reason is that they have lower levels of vitamin D, and then also they have lower exposure to the sun. One of the things that we know is that sun exposure helps you boost your nitric oxide production. Yes, sun exposure helps to boost your, uh, your vitamin D production, but also the ultraviolet, uh, ultraviolet light, ultraviolet A rays help to boost nitric oxide production. Ultraviolet B boosts vitamin D production. Okay, so the darker your skin, the less likely you're gonna have uh, vitamin D, less likely you're gonna have nitric oxide. Um, people need to know this. Um, Okay, well, immune system and uh, and the and uh, inflammation. If your if your vitamin D levels are low, there's a there's a greater chance you're going to have inflammation. And quite frankly, if I was going to point to one thing that makes it worse, it makes COVID nineteen worse, is inflammation. Of all the four, is inflammation. And by the way, COVID nineteen also uh, mops up your nitric uh, oxide levels. So the lower light nitric oxide levels you have, the more severe uh, COVID nineteen is going to be. Same thing with vitamin D. Uh, so I hope, so I kind of, what I've tried to do in this part is just to relate it to something we're all seeing and dealing with at the present time. Uh, so this is, uh, again, it's a picture about COVID-19 and how it affects the blood vessels and affects the blood vessels, it affects the, the muscle. The myocardium is the muscle of the heart. It affects the capillaries. It affects the brain. The less inflammation you have in your body, the less COVID-19 is gonna affect those things. Trust me, inflammation is what aids the spread of COVID-19. Inflammation, by the way, is also what aids the spread of cancer. The more inflammation you have, the more inflammation you have in your body, the more the cancer is able to spread and grow. So, like I said earlier, um, I'm not as big on multivitamins as I am, or as, as I am big on addressing those four areas, immune function, free radical damage, inflammation, nitric oxide production. You need, sometimes it's not just one supplement that can do it. However, having said that, is there possibly one supplement that can actually address all those areas? And yes, the answer is yes. Can you guess which supplement addresses all four of these areas? One single nutrient addresses all four of these areas. Type the answer in now. I'm going to take a break. I want to see how many, how many people have been listening to the show. Go ahead. I'm waiting for you. Burning daylight here. Type in what you think is the one supplement that, I, the one nutrient that addresses all four. Let me check. Come on, guys. Are we, are we, are we typed it in? Uh, let's check. What? I haven't seen anybody type in anything yet. I hope people have been hearing what I'm saying. No responses. No takers. I can't believe this. Okay. No takers. Okay. All right. Well, I guess you want you want you 
on the easy way out, huh? Okay, all right, so what is it? Drum roll, please. Vitamin D3, vitamin D3 has been known to boost the immune system, strengthen the immune system. Vitamin D3 helps, it acts as an antioxidant. Vitamin D3 acts as an anti-inflammatory. Vitamin D3 also boosts nitric oxide formation. So you have all four. Vitamin D3, this is all four. Now there's a caveat. Don't think for a single solitary second that taking vitamin D3 alone is going to solve all your problems. Uh, I can tell you it doesn't. It's, actually, it's a good start. It's a good foundation to build upon. You're going to need zinc. You're going to need, well, you're going to need, need vitamin C as well. Then you need all the different super, super uh, nutraceuticals like ACE Manin uh, for the immune system, especially. But uh, everybody, in my opinion, should be on a daily dose, not a weekly dose, daily dose of vitamin D3. You've got to be on that vitamin D3. I just don't know what else can be said about that, but there's been a lot that has been said about the importance of vitamin D3. And there you go, the four again, the four horsemen. Okay. Um, so part of our work, um, we're doing all this. Again, we're, 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 we're raising awareness for for the kids with sickle cell disease. Again, the four horsemen started with, uh, it grew out of our work with sickle cell disease. So message of hope. Uh, from what I've seen folks, uh, there are very few diseases, very few conditions that cannot be adequately addressed by strengthening the human body, by providing the human body with the tools and the resources and the circumstances that it requires to do what it needs to do. You just need to know what to do and how for and for how long and where to get the right tools. And once you get enough guidance with that, and that's what we're hoping to do with these webinars, to provide you with those tools and with those uh, with that direction, so that you can be, you can um, have you can avail yourself of the tools and the resources that are basically out there within your reach already. So uh, with that, I'm going to say thank you, and then I'm just going to open it up so we can. Let's see all your lovely faces again. I hope you haven't left me. <clears throat> okay. How are we doing? We're Good doing afternoon. fine. Hi. Doing great. We, everything is down below and we couldn't type anything. What? Yes. <laughs> it's all down at the bottom of the screen and you're blocking, somehow you're blocking all of the squares. Is that what's still happening now? Yes, <laughs> I can't get it to move up. Uh, so take your thank you off and open up the screen. Oh, it's okay. so you still, you still see my screen then, right? I, I can say <laughs> thank you. And then a little tiny strip at the bottom with our you and I and Lucin, Lucia and Mark name. So you got to bring it up somehow. Well, I shut, I thought shut the thank you off. It was on the side, and all of a sudden it flipped to the bottom when you asked that question. And I, I'm sure they were all trying to type the answer. I was. Right. So, uh, gosh, I thought I had stopped the share, though. There. So, perfect. <laughs> I, I didn't do anything different. Oh, okay. Well, now we can see where we can... Add a chat comment. Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> you didn't lose us. We're still here. And Jan Johnson, <laughs> welcome, Jan. Jan if made it. Hey, Jan. Click on your uh, microphone or your picture uh, down at the bottom left of your screen, the, the movie camera, um, and then we'll see your smiling, beautiful face. Anybody else that wants to come back on and ask Dr. David questions, it'd be great. We'll see ya. Can you see me? No, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I can see Charlie though. Hi, Charlie. Charlie? Uh, you know, that was really informative. No, Bobby, yeah. Go ahead, Lucia. 
Sorry. That was really informative. I really appreciate that. And it just confirms everything that I'm already doing for my veteran and Charlie and myself and just uh, combating all this traumatic brain injury stuff mm -hmm. that it doesn't seem like it's getting any better. Sometimes it seems like it's getting worse. And that's why I have to lay, lay down a lot. Um, anyway, I don't know that I have any questions for um, Dr. David. Um, I, I, um, I was taking the Celebrate for a while and like a super antioxidant ignogenol, which I know can pass through the blood brain barrier and actually repair brain cells. Um, but that's basically along with everything that he's already confirmed is what I'm doing. And I don't know that I have too many more questions, but I thank <laughs> you. Sometimes when the damage is real severe, like it was with you, um, yeah. of the physical damage, uh, yeah. it takes a while. It's not going to happen overnight. I'm yeah. Sure I agree. I will. With that. Hello, John. Or Jan. I'll see you later. Thank okay. you. Sure thing. Open your mic. Well, hi, Jerry. Hey, there they are. Hey, John. Hey, Jerry. Okay. There's a mic down in the corner. Click on that, Jan. And a little mic uh, icon down in the very bottom of the left-hand side. Just tap on it. There. Have you got us now? Yes. Yes, Good we do. Go. Hi. Good to see you. How's it going? Good. Uh, Good. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. Yeah, <laughs> baby, I'm doing fine. I can see, I can see, huh? <laughs> you enjoy the sun over there, aren't you? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. In the 80s now every day. 80s every day. Gosh, man, that's that's uh, and that's something. I drove past DC yesterday. Uh, yesterday, I was like, everybody was outside uh, playing and uh, doing the whole tour touristy thing, tourism thing. Like, last night, yesterday, sorry, yeah. last night. What was the temperature? Yeah, it was, was about the 70s. Mid oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so spring has sprung. Well, I hope mm -hmm. we bring it down to Dallas because I don't want to get, have snow or ice or anything when we're down there next week. So. Yeah. I Anybody know. have any questions, Mark, Nancy, Bobby? Or nope. Where do you, you get that? Where do you get that L arginine? That's in. Can you buy that? Yeah, I mean, we, we I, I, I order it. We, we have a, we have a thingy with the, with the company, so we, we can all, we can order it. We did, ordered it with for Nancy, uh, Nancy last time, so we can, uh, well, we can get. Is it, is it in my supplements I'm on right now? Is it an, an ingredient in that? There's some, but you're going to get a balance if you go with the one that Nancy got. Oh, okay. I'm taking. Uh, yeah, you, you, you need it in the right, you, you need at least five grams. I doubt if, uh, I doubt if the one you have is at least five grams of it. Okay. But he's got, he's got you on the supplements that we have and uh, in the yeah. amounts you should have, both of you. And I think that's really good. Keep you okay. young for each other. <laughs> yes, keep you young for each other. Okay. I'm not sure what so, that yeah. <laughs> Pardon? What was, that? what was that, Jerry? I said, I'm not sure what that meant, young for each other. Is that what I understand? <laughs> You'll figure it out. <laughs> Tomorrow, tomorrow's her birthday, you know. Yes. No way. Really? Yes. Oh, my goodness. You and Pat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Patrick. Nice. Is there going to be a party or something? If you're here, 
if you're here, it would be a party. <laughs> for sure, for sure. We miss you, buddy. I, yeah. Oh, I miss you guys too, man. Keep my cake. I want my cake. Send, send my cake with Jan when she's coming to Dallas. Please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, happy birthday. I'll give you a call tomorrow too, Jan, for us to say we wish you happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're better now. See you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any questions on, on this, on what I said? Anything else on, on that, Jan, Jan, Jerry? You got any questions? No, I'm not right now that I can think of. Okay. Got a couple okay. I want to go over personally with you, just one on one, though. Fine, you just tell me when. We'll give, we'll give it, we'll make it happen. Just let me know when you want to. We'll, we'll, okay. We'll All right. Okay. okay. All yeah. right. I hope the good. question is you want to be 25. I can't answer <laughs> that one. <laughs> no. Nothing I can do about that, Jerry. Okay. Good to see you. Bye. Good to see you too. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks, David. I enjoyed it. Oh, good. Glad you did. Glad you did. I got to go. Oh, okay. Bye. We'll see you Jan, next time. Bye-bye. We'll... Okay. All right. Bye. Good, good. Can Can we... Yep. I said bye. Hey, Nancy. <laughs> see ya. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Have a good day, everyone. Yep. Teach her how to open her mic. <laughs> <laughs>